Kalian mana kam, Pawis? Do you know what I just said? Kalian mana kam? Okay, today we are celebrating the Festival of Lights, Deepavali. In some places they call it Diwali. And we are celebrating it early because I tried to get um, guest artists to come in to give you something really quality. And uh, they are very busy from next week onwards, so they were not able to come next week. So this week, they're here. And we start off with a fabulous flautist right here from Powers. You know her, Vidri. And she is going to play something that is not entirely Indian, but with an Indian flavor, proving that Indian music is very flexible and can really basically navigate any kind of uh, music and any kind of style. So without further ado, let me introduce Vidri on the Indian flute. Vidri what uh, drew her to the Indian flute and she really loves the sound of it and practices. She has several teachers that teach her different techniques and one teaches her expression and the other teaches her different skills and techniques. And I think uh, more importantly, over everything else, it's a very spiritual experience for her. And so we are now going to move over to the area of dance. And dance, again in India, is a really internal experience you, you know you see it out there but at the same time it's something that's very private and personal to every single dancer today we look at Bharata Natyam and it is an interesting form we have a video to start off with after you watch the video you will um, see the live dancer and then she will take some questions and answers okay 
Enjoy the video. Namaste. My name is Raj Narayan, and I'm here with Shivani Thakkar, who will be demonstrating the basics of Bharatanatyam, one of the eight classical Indian dance forms. Classical Indian dance at its heart is a form of storytelling and dates back at least 2200 years to the Natya Shastra, a book on theater, music and dance that continues to guide the arts. It was performed in the temples as part of the worship of God and in the royal courts to entertain the king and his guests. Today, it is popular on stage, screen and television. Different as it may seem at first glance, India's classical dances have much in common with Western dance forms such as ballet. At first, ballet seems much different. In ballet, the dancer is attempting to float in the air, whereas Indian dance is more connected to the earth. These are basic ballet positions. And we have basic positions in Bharatanatyam. Let's take a look at the similarities between the basic positions in Bharatanatyam and ballet. In addition to these basic positions, Bharatanatyam has an extensive vocabulary of hand gestures, including movement of the head, eyes, arms, and feet. At first, a gesture may seem simple, such as the flat hand. We all use that to say hello, goodbye, come here, stay away, stop. But think about it. The same flat hand gesture can be used as a way to say you're hungry, you're tired, you can block your eyes from the sun, write on paper, read a book, show prayer, even clouds gathering, waves, rivers, or a door closing. There are 28 single hand gestures in Bharatanatyam, just like there are 26 letters in the alphabet. Mruga Shishaka, Sima Mukha, Kangolo, Sola Padma, Chatura, Brahmarahasta. The single hand gestures are like letters in dance storytelling. It's when we put them together that we can form words and sentences. Here are two hastas or hand gestures, Tripataka and Alapadma. By themselves, they don't have any meaning, but when we put them together, we can show the sun rising. This is just one example. The gestures are used in coordination with the arms, feet, torso and head to portray the story's different characters, both the humans and the animals. Dance starts, of course, with rhythm and music. In Indian dance, the dancer's feet follow the drummer's rhythmic patterns. The rest of the body follows the singer and the other instruments.
the Indian dancer brings this large repertoire of skills and talents to their storytelling. Indian dance portrays religious stories, recounts ancient tales of valiant warrior princes, celebrates the harvest season, in the process, entertaining and inspiring the people. And here's how you tell a story of going to the river. One day, early in the morning, when the sun was rising, a young maiden picked up her pot and walked down to the river bank. As she was filling her pot with water, she saw across the bank a little baby elephant. He came to get his morning drink and take a little shower. As she admired the elephant, she saw along the other side a beautiful peacock. She admired him. She then picked up her pot and came back home. Bharatanatyam isn't only a storytelling art form. Many dances showcase the artistry and technique of Bharatanatyam to showcase the pure joy of dancing without telling any particular story. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's put a warm welcome for Kausalya Sugumarin. She will perform the Michelle Alaripu. Get 
that with new eyes, with a fresh understanding of the dance. Okay, so can I just see a show of hands? How many of you actually take dance lessons outside of school? Doesn't have to be Indian dance. Any dance lesson? Fabulous. Okay, and how many of you actually know how to do this dance, Bharatanatyam? Anybody here? It's an art form that is slowly becoming, you know, less known by the new generation. If you found that this was really spectacular and you're drawn to it, please don't hesitate. Talk to me about, I want to learn how to do the Bharatanatyam and I will find the teachers for you because all art forms are legitimate. Now, Miss uh, Sugumarin, she is going to take some questions from the floor. If you have any interesting uh, ideas or any questions that you want, please uh, think about it right now. I'm just going to let her catch her breath, drink a little bit of water, and she'll be out very briefly. Thank you, Dee. <laughs> Hello guys, good morning. <laughs> okay, could you put up your hand if you have a question first? I can see a hand over there. How do you strengthen your core to like balance? Who is it coming from? Okay. <laughs> like yeah. when you bend down a lot yeah. or plie on point, mm -hmm. like how do you balance and strengthen your core? Okay. So, um, we start by strengthening our core. So, we do exercises that could, you know, withhold our strength. So, whenever... exercises that we do. So it's, it's uh, a gradually practiced kind of yeah, exercise. Yeah, practice makes perfect. <laughs> right. Oh, wait, hang on. He had his hand up first. Does your feet hurt from the friction with the floor? Do your, do your feet hurt from the friction on the floor? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> How did your head move left and right? <laughs> <coughs> okay. So that particular head movement is called atomy. You can try it out with me if you want to. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
of this anatomy is to accentuate um, the, eye, the eye movement. We have a mantra called Yeto hastas tato drishti. How long have you been learning Bhardhanatyam for? I started at the age of five. So it has been about two decades now. Yeah. Jito say, did you have a question? Do you have some story of the dance you do today? Yeah. So, um, the repertoire that I did earlier is called Mantra, uh, Mishra Alaripu, which means it's set to seven beats. If you realize at the end of the, um, the item, and um, it's also known to be the opening dance uh, item so as a beginner dancer who is about to embark on her first performance, her, his performance, this would be the uh, opening dance performance for them. The Alaripu, which means the, the opening of the lotus or blossoming of the lotus. Yeah. I would love to take more questions, but it's actually time to go for your period one. So everybody, please give a big hand again for coming all the way across uh, Batawata. And uh, yeah, giving you this special moment. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.